Good morning, adventurers. Good morning. So yesterday uh, was mostly just a driving day, but we arrived to the Spot X Surf Camp, which is where we stayed last night. But uh, we are just outside the town of Wulgulga, which that actually might be the funnest town name to say, because we were just in Katoomba, which I thought that was the funnest, but no. They just keep Wulgulga getting better. Wins. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to be doing something very cool today. We are going to be doing our first surf lesson. Oh yeah. Do We've you think we'll never be naturals? Before. Look at me. I got the stands. You already look like you've had a few lessons. Well, I do workouts and sometimes they make you do burpees and then get up into surf position. So I think I'm gonna do all right. But we came to one of the headlands that's just nearby. So a headland, we didn't really realize, but it's just kind of a coastal area that's elevated, kind of, I guess, cliff-like, mm -hmm. but usually gives you pretty epic views all around. And this one is known as the best spot in Australia to do whale watching. Uh, sadly, we are two months too early, so we will see no whales today, but we might see some dolphins. Otherwise, it's still just a beautiful view. Yeah, so we're gonna enjoy the view and then we're gonna go get our surf on. These are pretty incredible, but uh, our surf lesson starts in about 30 minutes. So we're gonna head back to the surf camp and hit the waves, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> we're gonna be talking like surfers immediately after this lesson. <laughs> Sorry in advance. We're not off to a great start. We showed up a little late and they hardly had any shirts or wetsuits for us. Good. They're pretty, uh, yeah, well, they're a bit tattered. Yeah. Because everyone else got all the good ones. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then I went to put a wetsuit on, got one leg in, and went to the other one, and a huge cockroach this big came flying out of there. So I was like, stick with the just the, the top for me. What's happening? Looking forward to a lesson. The golden rule in the ocean, for me anyway, is staying relaxed. If you stay relaxed in the water, seriously guys, you're gonna be you're really gonna be okay. Alright, classroom time is over. We are out here now and I guess we're gonna start going out in the water soon. Yeah. I can't say I'm uh, feeling too yeah. confident about <laughs> it. You're gonna do great, kid. <laughs> it's gonna be fun, right? I haven't quite mastered uh, holding a surfboard yet. <laughs> Yeah, man, we have a great today. I'm going to the green room. See you there. For those of you who don't know, green room is when you get inside the wave, man. In all seriousness, though, that was a lot of fun. Very difficult. It was very difficult. I think I pulled a few things. Actually, it wasn't so difficult. It's just you get out there and you've done all this stuff on the land and then you think like, can I really just start doing it in the water? And I thought it would be a lot more dangerous than it is, but I mean, as long as you bail like they tell you to, then it's totally fine. So you can just get out there and really just have fun with it. Yeah, and sadly, halfway through my GoPro stopped working, so I didn't get any cool shots when I really started to be yeah. able to stand up towards the end. But, but we promised we got up multiple times. We rode the sweet waves. But we're going to hop back in the van. We've got a long drive for the rest of the day over to Byron Bay. Yes, Byron Bay, which will be another sweet surf spot. I don't know if we'll... Uh... We'll see if we have what it takes to get back in the water. <laughs> to Byron Bay. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. We survived surfing this morning, although we're quite sore and I Already so busted sore. my toe up as well. It's black and blue, maybe the worst bruise he's ever gotten. Yeah, it's just like my toenail turned purple, but <laughs> other than that, no serious injuries. But before we head into town to explore it a bit, we just want to tell you a little bit about Byron Bay. So it is a town in the northeastern corner of New South Wales 
And what's interesting is that it became super popular since the 1960s when surfers and hippies came here and started to settle here. Now it's a bit of a tourist hub. People come here for, you know, the surfing, natural beauty, and there's also a huge art scene, which is a big part of the culture here. So you're gonna see murals all over the town. This town actually only has 5,000 residents but it has over 1.5 million visitors coming here every year. But now we are going to head to a nearby pub because there is some popular pub grub here in Australia that we really want to try. We're just exploring the town a little bit because uh, apparently the pub we were going to go to doesn't start serving food until 12. Uh. But that's all right because there are tons of amazing little shops with all kinds of really rustic kind of clothing and shoes yeah, and like, hats nice and all kinds feature. of stuff. I'm, uh, I'm having a fun time killing time here. Yeah, she's enjoying it. <laughs> I just get stressed out by all this shopping. <laughs> Our lunch has arrived and I am so excited. So I think we are trying the most popular bar food in all of Australia, which is this lovely dish right here called the chicken parmigiana, or I guess here it would be chicken parma or chicken parmi. We have never had it prepared this way. In the States, we have chicken parmesan, right? Is that mm -hmm. how you say it? But it's usually the, the battered chicken over pasta yeah. with marinara sauce and cheese. This beauty, though, is a big hunk of deep fried chicken with uh, ham, some tomato sauce and cheese on top, served with chips and a salad. We were gonna try some barramund barramundi, barramunda. Yeah, I the, think that's it. <laughs> barramundi fish. Yeah, fish and chips. But we saw that they had kangaroo on the menu. Y'all, you can't come to Australia and not try kangaroo, I think. So I think we're gonna try to eat the fish that she mentioned at another time. We weren't sure if this, if a pub was the best place to get it. And we were also just super excited to try the kangaroo bites. So that's oh what we're gosh. gonna do. It looks like hunks of beef. I'm so excited for this. Yeah, well let's try the chicken yes. parma first. Cause I think it needs to be eaten nice and hot. Deep fried chicken with cheese and ham on top and french fries on the side. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's, ooh. The crust is just flaking it's, off there. It's so crispy. I don't think it's gonna be too crazy tasting, but I'm excited for it nonetheless. Oh yeah, that is perfect pub food. Oh my gosh. So the chicken is really nice and moist in there. And then the outside is super crunchy. The ham is nice. It makes it super salty and the cheese on there. And then the marinara sauce is nice because everything's pretty savory, so it adds a little um, sauce in there to break it all up. With chips though, I guess chips probably aren't so much better than pasta, but for some reason they seem a lot worse. I guess because it's all deep fried. I like that they give you a cheeky little salad on the side though, as if Get that's a like greens in there. apologizing for everything you're gonna eat. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not 100% sure how this became such a popular dish in Australia. It seems a little random to us, but. I'm sure some Australians watching know, so let us know in the comments. Yeah. So these are the little kangaroo bites that we got. We figured the chicken parm would be pretty filling, so this will just be a nice little uh, addition to it. But it's definitely a little bit, it's got like a stringiness to it. But you can see they made it a little bit pink on the inside, but it still has some nice little char marks on the outside. I think it's gonna be kind of chewy. Seems like it. It is a little bit chewy, but it's got a lot of flavor in the meat. There's some savory sauce that it's in as well, which is nice. You get a nice burn flavor from the little charred bits that are on the outside. I love that it's kind of medium cooked because uh, it still gives it a lot of flavor to the meat. Not bad at all. It is in some, uh, I think it was a coffee sauce, which is really nice because the bitterness of it, I think, pairs really well with the saltiness, too. It's almost like a mix between lamb and beef, I would say. Yeah. I'm pretty impressed. I didn't know what to expect from kangaroo, but you guys are adorable and delicious. Sorry. <laughs> the meat has almost like a greenish tint to it, don't you think? Yeah, it does actually, like yeah. a gray. <laughs> yeah, grayish green, which might not sound that appetizing, but it tastes pretty good. You guys will have to let us know if you enjoy kangaroo, and if so, what, how you like it prepared, like sausage, a burger, just grilled like this. I think we'll definitely try some other forms while we're here, because uh, this is pretty cool, and one of the few countries where you can get it nice and fresh.
You guys, we were just walking around and we noticed a bunch of bats chilling in that tree up there. Check it out. Like four, five, there's a whole heap of them in there. Look how big they are. I mean, I don't know if you guys can really tell, but they're huge. Oh, they're moving around. Oh. Yeah. And they're preparing for their nightly feast. <laughs> Hopefully not on us. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear, but they're making the most horrible sound. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> exactly what I would imagine the biggest, most terrifying bats in the world to sound like. Oh yeah, they and they have... They're called flying fox bats. They have a little informational thing here, but these are flying fox bats because they're, they're kind of cute, but also terrifying because they look like little foxes. We had a beautiful day going on. And then we decided, oh, let's rent some bikes and ride out to this lighthouse. And the minute we did it, it just started pouring down rain. But it's off and on, so you, we stop. You stop, it stops, the rain stops, and then you start going and it starts pouring on you. I think we've stopped four times now. Yeah, but we made it to the walking trail. The rain's lit up a little bit for now. We are headed out to this lighthouse that we really wanted to check out that's kind of on the edge out here. I don't know how long it's going to take to get there, but it should be some epic views. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can give you a little history of the lighthouse when we get and there. hopefully this storm officially clears up right, on our way out. there. We made it to uh, a lookout called Fisherman's Lookout. And uh, the views are incredible. You can see all these surfers down there going nuts. A lot more skilled than we are. Yeah, I was about to say, this is the secret hideout. Way far away from the noobs like us, I guess. Yeah, there are <laughs> lots of rocks to smash your face on. There's beautiful weather over there. And then as you rotate back here, it gets worse and worse. And that's exactly where we're supposed to be going. Yeah, the Dang lighthouse it. is right over that hill over there. So we're getting a little bit screwed. And you can actually see uh, separate rainstorms out there. There's one over there, there, and there. And then beautiful over here. Yeah, what the heck? The city over there, it's bright and sunshiny. We left it in our dust. Hope you guys enjoyed the drone flight. I managed to get it up for just a little bit and now the rain's coming right back. So we're running on out of here. You guys, the sun has come out. We <laughs> decided we deserve a beer after all that hard yes, bike riding. That's do. a single single gear bicycle and it's really hard to go up some of these hills. This area is super hilly. So obviously we didn't make it all the way out to the lighthouse because it was super hilly. But if yeah. you go out that way, that is the most easterly point of all of Australia. Yeah. Or Which the mainland, wanted, I guess, yeah. We wanted to see that when we were here, but we weren't sure if the rain was gonna let up, but now it's like perfectly clear skies. Of course. But another thing you also have to do is come to Byron Bay Brewing which we have done. Mm -hmm. We got two of their happy hour beers. I got the frothy holiday, which is a lager. And I got the hazy one, which I'm assuming is a lager as well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Ding! Both nice and refreshing though. Very good, very cold. <laughs> All right, well, we cannot wait to explore more of this amazing country. We'll be off to Brisbane tomorrow. Yep. We might take tomorrow off because I think it's mostly a driving day, but we will be mm -hmm. back at you with more amazing views and foods and all sorts of Australian things. Oh yeah. Good night, adventures. We'll see you on the road.